This video is everything you need to know about Apple Silicon. All the rumors, everything we know from Apple, all compiled into this one video for you to watch. And make sure to watch the whole thing because there is some crazy news at the end. Anyway, if it's your first time here, please consider liking or subscribing after you've watched the video and comment any feedback that you have because that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Okay, let's get started. So just a disclaimer, I'm shooting this video on the week of October 18th, closer to October 20th. So if you're watching this video, there might be more news in the future. Okay, just some background information. Apple announced that they were going to switch to Apple Silicon at WWDC 2020. I feel like this happened because Intel chips were being delayed, which was hurting the Mac release schedule. Also, because Apple can make better chips like they have in their iPads and iPhones. Now, this isn't Apple's first switch. They switched from PowerPC to Intel quite a few years ago, and that switch was kind of rocky. That is why Apple has a series of programs in place to make sure that this transition is much smoother, including programs to convert not ARM-ready programs to ARM, so everything is compatible with your new machine. Okay, let's talk advantages now. The point of Apple Silicon is to give us a powerful laptop with amazing efficiency. So in that blue area, right over there. Now we know this is possible because Apple has been doing it for years in their iPhones and their iPads. Their iPhone chips are miles ahead of any company, and these have incredible processing power, while their iPad rivals high-level laptops. And both of these products have almost no fans and great battery life. And crazy good performance. If Apple can transfer this to the Mac, which they can, they can have Macs that run cooler and have amazing performance. Here's an example. Apple's iPad Pro 2020 has a Geekbench score of over 4,500, same as the high-spec 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now, in a Mac, Apple has way more space for cores, and they even have a smaller 5 nanometer processor this year. So we can expect the MacBooks refreshed with ARM to have a tremendous amount of power. Actually, if we look at previous trends, the 13-inch MacBook Pro refreshed with Apple Silicon could have the current 16-inch MacBook Pro's power. In fact, the rumors say that Apple Silicon Macs will have twice the cores as the 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's 12 whole cores. So lots of power, runs cooler, more battery life. There's also price, but I'll cover that more in the pricing part of the video. And another big-ish advantage is that it'll be able to run iPhone and iPad apps without the developer needing to do anything. Now, this could be useful for gaming, but I'm sure Apple has some other tricks up its sleeve where they're going to apply this. Okay, let's talk disadvantages. Now, Apple Silicon might be really good, but it'll also take around two years for everything to be set. Also, since it runs on the ARM architecture, not all apps will be able to run from day one. Like I said, Apple does have some softwares to smooth that out, but I doubt that the first ARM Max will be without a few minor bugs. Another sad thing is no bootcamp. Everything is going full Apple. Apple has full control. So unless you use something else, you will not be able to run Windows on your Mac. But that's pretty much it for disadvantages. Okay, now here's the crazy news I was talking about. Recently, the release date for the Apple event that is set to announce these Apple Silicon Macs was leaked. So yeah, now we're going over release date and price. Anyway, the Apple Silicon MacBooks are supposed to come on November 17th. Now, we knew the MacBooks were going to release in November. Apple confirmed this in WWDC by saying they were going to come at the end of the year. But now we have an exact date, November 17th. We still don't know which Macs will be refreshed with the new chip. However, we have a very strong suspicion that the first on Mac is going to be the 13-inch MacBook Pro. And sadly, the MacBook is rumored to have no changes with this chip. So no smaller bezels, no better port selection, only the chip will change. This way, whatever improvements people see in the 13-inch MacBook Pro, they know is from the ARM chip. We also have a strong hunch that the 12-inch MacBook will also be refreshed this year or early next year. This is perfect because the 12 inch was literally supposed to be a powerful laptop that has high efficiency and is pretty much fanless. And that is exactly what Apple Silicon can deliver. Now the prices for these Macs are pretty complicated. Since Apple isn't buying from Intel, they could technically lower the price of their laptop by a lot. 
some people think on two hundred dollars will be cut off the price so the 12 inch would be eight hundred dollars maybe some kind of macbook air replacement and the 13 inch might start at one thousand one hundred dollars However, technically, we are getting more value from Apple. So Apple might just keep the price the same and saying, oh, well, you're getting more power and better battery life. Why don't you stick with that? In fact, they could also increase the price saying you're getting more power and better battery life. I'm sorry, we're going to have to increase the price. They could also reduce it by 50 to $100. There's a lot of things they could do. Right now, though, the most agreed upon thing is cutting $200 off the price. Also, we did get some rumors about the 14 inch everybody's been waiting for and the 16 inch refresh with ARM that's probably coming mid next year. We have no cost details on that, but they would be part of a pro high line that I would expect to cost over $1,500. Anyway, that's a roundup of Apple Silicon rumors. Like I said, please like, subscribe, and comment any feedback that you have that would be greatly appreciated. See you guys in the next video.